Now, people who are afraid of flying often have this image in their heads of planes being able to just randomly fall out of the sky, which in practice doesn't really happen. If your plane does crash, it mostly occurs on a takeoff or landing in a cruise flight like right here at 30,000 feet and 500 knots. No, it is very uncommon to see an airliner fall out of the skies indeed, unless you're inside of a comet plane that randomly decides to fall apart midair or a maybe a DC-10, or maybe a Cessna skydive plane, but that's another story. Or maybe if you were on Lada Air Flight 004, which happened in 1991 on board a 767. What happened there was that the thrust reverser of the number one engine, the left engine, randomly deployed in midair at 400 knots. With now air being pushed forward out of the airplane, the lift capabilities of the wing it was attached to were practically reduced to zero, which is why the airplane practically stalled. The plane ended up in a spiraling conditions that, that put G-forces upon it over the limit of their airframe and then caused it to practically fall apart while still at high altitudes, which is a crazy thought and a possibility that wasn't really thought a lot of previously. I mean, we could try to recreate this case of a reversal deployment in midair in X-Plane. What is interesting is that we can't actually see a huge effect. As you can see, we are kind of yawing to the left, which is, you know, very expected when now this engine is pushing air. But no, this plane is not stalling and falling out of the sky. Everything is actually quite all right. In fact, we have a lot of time to turn those engines off. This is no problem. In real life, it would have probably looked a little bit more like this. Oh, and there we go. Uh, really isn't good before. We've lost everything. Uh, no, 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 no. It's generally spiraling out of the sky. Flap over speed. And the A350 now has officially fallen apart. And this is actually a good explanation of why planes can't deploy reverse thrust in mid flight. They would practically stall out. On a 737, you can only, for example, deploy reverse thrust below 10 feet above ground. But one plane that can use reverse thrust in flight and therefore can safely fall out of the skies is the C-17. I've already made a video about its capabilities, but it's also the glorious DC-8. It had its first flight in 1958. Over 500 of these were produced, and some of them are still flying around, and they're loved around the globe. Now, let me take off here with this plane. Check out all that emissions. Beautiful black smoke. We can hear those engines. <laughs> And we can definitely hear how much has changed over 50 years with noise emissions of airplane engines. A very important step in aviation for planes to be able to operate without anyone being deafened. And let me show you the trick that the DC-8 can do. Let's put the reversers on, which we can actually genuinely do. Check out these beautiful toggles right there. And yes, indeed, the plane is reversing. We might not want to do this for a long time. Oh, yes. And despite that, DC-8 can still go. There you go. We're not actually dead. Yes, let's call it the Freedom Liner. You have the freedom to deploy reverse thrust in mid-flight, as well as being able to go supersonic speeds like they did. Uh, now, to be able to actually say whether this plane can fall out of the skies, we should now try it. Genuinely, we are now cutting the engines back to idle, and then boom, yes, pulling the thrust reversers, going full power, and there we go. Air is being pushed forwards with this beautiful old-school shovel design that the DC-8 has. A very practical way of making the engine thrust go forward. All right, looking good. Now, why is the DC-8 able to do all this? Well, you can see how small these engines are. First of all, the four engines, which means that there's less reverse thrust power coming out of it. But it's also the DC-8's engine placement. Here are those long pylons, as you can see, long struts, which doesn't affect the lift performance of the wing. Let's maybe, come on, let's maybe drop our airplane out of the skies. Indeed, as part of an emergency descent, we can even put out those spoilers. There we go. We are hardly gaining any speed. Well, also dropping our plane at 3,000 feet per minute, or perhaps 4,000 feet per minute, which no other airline will be able to give you. There we go. We can even pull some stunts, and I promise you, we have the airport down there. We're going to be able to land there from this altitude of what is it? 23,000 feet. Yes, normally at this airport, you'd have to be 20,000 feet lower than we are right now. But if we put the landing gear down, you will have so much drag also from those huge flaps that we're genuinely able to fall out of the skies. But proper. There we go. Looking good. We are on final approach to Palma de York Airport. Being able to lose 5,000 thousand feet per minute while not gaining a single knot of airspeed. Check this out. 
6,000 feet per minute. Within a minute, we'll be at 10,000 feet. Check out this angle of which this plane is in. Check out those flaps. Beautiful. We're straight headed for our runway. Beautiful. All right. This is a proper ILS approach. We're right now exceeding over 6,000 feet of loss of altitude per minute. Speed is now exceeding 6,000 in the minus. So we're actually over the clock. Our runway is getting closer and closer. And I'm putting the nose down all the way. We're now at 3,000 feet, getting closer to that runway. And we're losing speed even. That is just crazy. Sink rate, sink rate, sink yeah, 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 you're just fine. Rate. We've got the beautiful AGL altitude indicator. We're right now 20. We're right now 1,400 feet above ground, 1,300. Perfect. Our reverse thrust is still applied. We're still applied. Now we're good on the poppies. All right now, our first thrust is still running and we're putting fall into the brakes, which should stop us in zero time as well. Beautiful, and we can exit the runway. That is what I'm talking about, the DC-8, everybody. A plane with reverse thrust is so powerful that we can actually... You know, this, is, this might not be the most realistic representation. This is actually quite great. Check this out. We don't need no pushback truck. We can probably take off and reverse. Now, while the C-17 with its reverse thrust, you know, often does landing selected, we just did a tactical approach. There you can see this is quite cool. This is practically just what a normal landing at London City looks like. It was surely not done a lot in the DC-8 in passenger service. This is a landing in Hamburg, 1993. You can see uh, thrust reversers, yeah only deploying while on the ground, which is quite boring. In real aviation, it was always just a, you know, test a little bit. Reverse thrust, test flight animation. This is from National Geographic. And you can see, yep, yeah, the deployment of reverse thrust, which then lets the plane this is a very exaggerated excel this is a very exaggerated animation <laughs> so what are the beautiful dc8 here with the cfm engines that we also saw on youtube a beautiful airplane that um can fly maybe not at saint Bartho oh a little too big but it's uh, a very adventurous airplane in fact this might have not worked um Great. But no matter what happens, we can still deploy Rushras in mid-flight and practically let this airplane fall out of the skies. So thank you guys much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Duram, Ragings, Matt RLG, Matt Van Z, Moritz, Wellhausen, Knott's Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.